Surah Al-Kahf was revealed at a certain period in Mecca when Prophet Muhammad وسلم, and the early believers had already experienced all the forms of challenge that the Quraysh were doing to destroy or end the nascent early community, which was they had tried persecution, they had tried boycotting them, they had tried uh, you know, saying, calling the Prophet وسلم, a magician, a liar, a soothsayer. They had tried all of these things, but nothing was really stopping still his slow yet steady growth and nothing was certainly killing it or reducing it. And so they said that, then they started thinking that we need to discredit him as a messenger of God. He says that he receives revelation from Allah. So if we can go to people or get from people something from revelation that he should know because he's the messenger of Allah and he's not able to, then that would discredit in the eyes of people that he claims to be receiving revelation from Allah. And so even in those times, they recognized that the Ahlul Kitab or people of scripture, whether it was the Jews or the Christians, though what was more accessible to them were, was, were the, Jew, the Jewish tribes in Medina. And so what they decided to do is the Quraysh sent two of their people, which was Nafr ibn al-Harith and, and Uqba ibn Abi Muqit, to the Jewish tribes in Medina and asked them, said, is there something that you can tell us from scripture of how we, that only a prophet might know or only something in revelation might know? And so they, and so they said, Is'aluhum an fityatin kanu fi zaman al-awwal kana lahum sha'nun azim that ask him or ask them, ask him about a group of youth, a group of young men that existed, that were from a time long ago, who had an amazing affair, an amazing story. And they said, وَاسْأَلُوهُمْ عَنْ رَجُلٍ طَافَ الْأَرْضِ Ask him about the man who journeyed across the earth until he reached the east of it and the west of it. And they also said, وَاسْأَلُوهُمْ عَنِ الرُّوحِ Ask him about the soul, about the, the ruh that all of us have. And so they went back with these questions to Prophet Muhammad And Prophet Muhammad was very eager to wanting to convince the Quraysh of his prophethood. And he said he would tell them the answers to these things tomorrow. And tomorrow came, and Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu had not yet received any revelation about this. And so he felt awkward and not good about this. And then the next day came, and same thing. Next day came, same thing. Next day came, same thing. And by this time, the Quraysh thought that that's it. They had kind of discredited him. Here's someone who doesn't know. And the Prophet himself وسلم, was feeling in a bad way about this. Until 15 days later, according to some narrations, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed some of the answers to these things in part of Surah Al-Kahf and also a part of Surah Isra or Bani Israel. And one of the th things that Allah revealed in there for Prophet Muhammad وسلم's own benefit and then really for us, he says, وَلَا تَقُولَنَّ لِشَيْءٍ إِنِّي فَاعِلٌ ذَلِكَ غَدًا إِلَّا أَنْ يَشَاءُ اللَّهِ And do not say about anything that I will do so and so tomorrow except that, you, except that it is by the will of Allah. And if you forget, then uh, uh, then seek forgiveness from Allah and, and, and remember Him. And so this was, of course, a correction and a reminder to Prophet Muhammad wasallam, but really also a core aspect of our understanding of Allah. 
our understanding of Allah's role and active control over every aspect of our existence, things that we think are just a matter of course that would happen. But if we have it in our mind and in our heart that at every single instance, it is only by Allah's power that everything exists that continues from one moment to the next and that anything can happen, that this core part of our aqidah is what Allah is reminding us both as a knowing the power of Allah, but really also giving us a sense of security because everything at the end of the day is in Allah's hand.